I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my life living in my own Nicaragua. And today I'm going to be answering Dallas Barkman's question about, hey, can you talk about culture shock coming to Nicaragua? And he's got a few more little tidbits of question that he wants to ask in there as well. So we're going to get to that right after the bump. Those who know me pretty well know that one of the things that I look for, or a range of things that I look for when I was looking for a country to move to, all would basically trigger culture shock. Like, I like going to, I don't know if exotic is quite the right word, but places that are significantly different than where I grew up and what my uh, native experiences are. And Nicaragua, which I chose to live in long term, definitely meets that criteria. So for a lot of people, especially if you're new to travel or certainly new to relocation, you're going to find Nicaragua almost certainly to be a bit of a culture shock, especially if you're coming from someplace like the US or Canada, which are about as polar opposite from Nicaragua as you can reasonably get within the region. Now, it's very hard to describe all the ways that you may experience culture shock when coming to Nicaragua, especially because it's hard to know exactly what your context is going to be. And everyone who comes to Nicaragua ends up in a very different situation anyway. When I first came nine years ago, I first went and lived in Granada. And at that time, I was awfully shocked by the level of poverty that I experienced. However, and this goes into part of Dallas Barkman's question, I had lived abroad in a few other countries, notably Panama, before moving to Nicaragua. And Panama, like Nicaragua, has an extreme uh, poverty issue. Uh, and unlike Nicaragua, well, it, to some degree like Nicaragua, there's a high degree of disparity in incomes. In Panama, that disparity is actually a little bit higher, to the best of my knowledge. And uh, when you have really poor areas of Panama, they're actually about the same as really poor areas of Nicaragua. If my uh, memory and changes to Panama are as I believe that they are, actually, I think the differences are larger in Panama now, because Nicaragua has done such a great job of bringing those who are in the lowest levels of poverty up while not having the, the high end explode in the way that Panama has had the rich become extremely rich and the poor remain basically where they are. So there's actually, I think, a greater culture shock in some ways going to Panama than there is in coming to Nicaragua. But in both cases, in all cases, this could include Costa Rica, which he also asked about. And I'm gonna go ahead and say what his question was, so we're not just alluding to it. In the question, he asked, would, given the potential for a very high level of culture shock for someone coming to Nicaragua, would it behoove them to visit someplace like Panama or Costa Rica first, which gives them a little bit of a soft introduction into Latin America, but in a country that is much richer, so they may have a, a little bit more of an adjustment period before coming to Nicaragua. And of course, any place that you go before you go to some other place is going to give you some amount of adjustment. So that could help anyone that's moving somewhere if your goal is to give them the uh, the optimum shockless experience in going to that new country, if that's really a goal and makes sense, then that could be true for sure. Having lived in Panama prior to coming to Nicaragua, uh, you know, most of the things that I experienced in Nicaragua, I had already experienced in Panama. So that was not a not a really big deal coming to Nicaragua in those cases. Um, but I do remember nine years ago coming to Nicaragua for the first time. And there was a lot of things that I had a hard time understanding what I was seeing. Sometimes I would see uh, a shed on the side of the road and I'd be like, is that a house? I don't know. Is it a business? Why is that a business? Why are things built the way that they are? Why do things look the way they are? Why are houses organized? the way that they are. A lot of things are just confusing. And of course, having very little context to understand them, we tend to jump towards, well, this is an extreme level of poverty. People are struggling. And this is just this terrible situation. And nine years ago, it was far worse than it is now. The country has really improved in so many ways. It is a completely different place today than it was when I first went through my culture shock of coming to Nicaragua. But now I have two things. One is that a lot of that abject poverty that we saw then is no longer out there. We would just drive down the highway and be like, oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow. It was, it was very visible in all walks of life. But now driving those same areas, there's really nice houses and, and completely different developments. And the country has absolutely changed. So on one hand, what I was shocked by nine years ago generally isn't around. Some exist 
of course. And then on the other hand, I've had nine years to adjust, not just to Nicaragua, but living around the world and having a very different context from which to see things. I no longer have a, I've only lived in the United States and everything that doesn't look American seems odd to me. If you go to Europe and go to say Germany, for example, a country that is extremely rich, in some cases you'll be like, wow, they seem so poor compared to Americans. But Germans who go to America say exactly the same thing. Wow, they're so poor compared to Germans. And it's because each of them has things that they expect. Americans tend to expect that you're going to have a lot of land around your house. Germans think you're going to have really nice organized uh, villages where it's easy to get to lots of resources. And both think the other is poor for not being able to afford or have the things that they prioritize. But in reality, it is a prioritization of different things for the most part. And you're not looking at a great income disparity, some, but not that large. And what you're actually saying is that culturally, they're very different places and do very different things. And, and you just can't compare them directly. When you come to Nicaragua, you're going to find that it's those things to an extreme. Every little aspect of life is so incredibly different. The history is different. The culture is different. When you put that all together, it's very hard if you don't have a large global context to really look at everything you're seeing and understand and interpret in a meaningful way what you're experiencing. So one way or another, culture shock is going to be a real thing. Coming to Nicaragua, you are bound to have culture shock. But it's not necessarily a bad thing. You're coming for a world that is different than the one you're leaving. That's what's driving you here. Almost certainly, maybe you're coming for love. Maybe you're coming because of family. That happens. But the majority of you, especially the majority on my channel, if you're actually coming to Nicaragua, you're going to be coming because you're looking for, for a change. You're looking for something better, presumably, and that's going to come with culture shock just naturally. But the question that uh, Dallas Barkman had was, would it be good if you went to one of these other countries first? And I think if it's your very first time venturing outside of your home region and you really have no world context, yeah, I think that might actually be true. Spending a little bit of time in a place like especially Panama, less Costa Rica, uh, and getting kind of your feet wet with a here's a place that is not so American, a place where a lot of things are just different, not better or worse, just very, very different. Still has big cities and a lot of things that could feel more familiar, but the culture is completely different could be good. It'll break some of those things and some of the the it's not America anymore or it's not Canada anymore culture shock will be whittled away by that process so that when you come to Nicaragua, you have a better chance of coming and experiencing culture shock that's only about what Nicaragua is and less about what the United States is not or what it is not in the, con the context of the United States. And certainly a large benefit that I had. By the time I came to Nicaragua, I'd been in probably more than 20 countries. So Nicaragua fit, fit into a large spectrum of different axes that was relatively easy to understand and still relatively a shock for me. So if you're coming without that context, then absolutely. But if you do have a lot of travel under your belt, you're used to a lot of different places, I think coming directly to Nicaragua is fine. It's important though, it's very important. I wanna make this clear, this is only talking about culture shock. Nicaragua is very safe, very approachable, very easy. If you're looking for a very exciting, exotic experience that you can get to very cheaply and quickly from the United States or reasonably from Canada, Nicaragua is an excellent place to come and just get hit with every aspect of life is different than the United States. It's not just culturally, but in the way that society functions. Every little choice is tuned very differently. And you feel that very quickly, and you will definitely get the exposure to what could life be like very quickly. But it is a risk for some people coming to someplace that is so wildly different can be overwhelming. So if that is a fear, if you're like, I'm kind of trepidatious about travel, then that would lead me to say maybe Nicaragua will be a little bit much on your first venture. Go give, now if you're really nervous, right? Now I do, I do travel shows as well, completely unrelated to this content. And one of the things that we always recommend is like, if, you've if you're from the US, try going to Canada. Go to places that are really easy. Go to England, go to Spain inch into places that speak other languages, places that are very tourist friendly, have loads of infrastructure, Costa Rica as well. If you've just never traveled and you're worried about where you're gonna go, and I know, trust me, before I traveled a lot, I had this like, what is it like going there? Could it be really hard? Will I be able to get by without speaking English? I don't know, I didn't have the answer to those questions. I watched a ton of Rick Steves, I felt pretty confident, right? But the same 
barriers exist. So if you worry about those things and, and if your internal worries are going to be the things that really cause problems for you, then solve them. Solve them by going to simpler countries, places that don't worry you as much. Get your panic out of the way in those countries. Do a couple places and then come to Nicaragua and be like, OK, boy, this it is easy. It is friendly. It is safe. Great. And it's really cost effective. Great. Now, the only things you really have to worry about are the Nicaraguan culture shocks that you can't really get away from because it is different than other places. But some of you know Kemi from my channel. She was on almost exactly a year ago. We did our really famous episode to Hino Tega and some others. And uh, she had never traveled. She's from the Montreal region, but from a small village outside Montreal. And her first time traveling internationally was to Nicaragua. She jumped straight into Nicaragua and absolutely loved it. And she keeps coming back because she loves Nicaragua. And as she explores the rest of the world. She loves lots of places, but Nicaragua is always very special to her as well. So even if you're a completely inexperienced young traveler, Nicaragua is absolutely accessible. But some people really do struggle with some of the very visible things. And as Dallas Sparkman pointed out, in Nicaragua, poverty is very visible. It's visible in everyday life. It's visible as you drive down the street. It is way better than it was nine years ago. A lot of things will look like extreme poverty that actually aren't, but there is legitimately a lot of poverty. And a lot of Americans, because poverty is so hidden in America, are very shocked to see how public it is in Nicaragua. In the United States, of course, being super poor is a mark of shame, and people really struggle with uh, the, the mental aspects of that, the psychological aspects of being super poor. But in Nicaragua, it is not a mark of shame. There is an incredibly high unemployment rate. People are in a position where not everyone has the opportunities to make lots of money, and there's no reason to feel shame for not, there's probably no reason to feel shame in the United States either. It's just that you do, because society hoists that on you. But here in Nicaragua, you don't have society putting those pressures on people. Of course, people want to be successful. They don't want to be in poverty obviously, but they don't feel shame because it's not their fault in 99% of cases that they're in that poverty. They didn't have access to the education. They didn't have access to the right jobs. They didn't learn English. They didn't have the right job skills. They lived in a village that was too remote and had no way to get to where they needed to go. There just aren't that many jobs in the market, et cetera. There's no reason for them to feel badly. They just have to work through it and deal with what they're going to deal with. So you have uh, a, a societal change where people are not hiding poverty. If anything, they want to expose it because it makes it easier to deal with. And people who are living in poverty don't want to be hidden away and be farther away from things. They want to be where it's most convenient to make that poverty as bearable as possible. And that all goes with making it a lot more visible. Also, people live outside a whole lot more than in the United States, where people have a tendency to live inside their houses. We talk about this a lot on the channel. You guys probably know this. North Americans are very focused on what you do inside the walls of your house. But most of Latin America, and especially here in Nicaragua, people are extremely focused on what happens outside the walls of their house. So houses are small, but people spend time in their communities rather than in their homes. But Americans who are seeing it for the first time see small houses, often houses that just don't have the effort put into them that you would in the United States, and they think it must be poverty that they're seeing. But what they're often seeing is simply an outdoor culture where keeping your house really fancy and making it really big because that's where you spend all your time isn't a cultural thing. Of course, a few people do that, mostly expats. And you can, that's perfectly fine. But you see my videos, I record almost never inside and I'm hardly an exception. People spend their lives outdoors or at least outside of their homes. And so putting in lots of time and money into making the inside of your house really expensive and fancy and full of things just makes you a target for criminals because that is exactly what would happen in a poverty-stricken country with low incomes. It, the crime of opportunity is where things are going to happen. People are not violent, but they are hungry. And if you have a lot of money lying around and you're not home and your house is full of stuff, that's going to make someone interested in, you know, that extra TV that you don't need could feed their family for a month or two or three. And so that's a hard thing to turn down when starvation is the thing you're worried about. Very few Nicaraguans are actually facing starvation, fewer than you have, say, the British facing starvation in their own country, so it's all perspective, but it does provide a huge income for a very poor family from a very small item in someone's house. So the trend to fill your house with expensive things that makes you a target that you will rarely use is not popular. Plus, because you're not spending time at home, why have all those things, right? It's a lot of things to clean and maintain and worry about and replace. If that's not something you're going to use, you don't generally 
purchase those things. And in the United States, we're used to having a TV in every room, having big TVs. Those things are a mark of success. We look for them when you go into a house. And when you get really rich, oh, they're so rich they don't have a TV, right? It starts to flip. And here in Nicaragua, those things are not a mark of being successful. It, it doesn't mean anything in that way. And people don't tend to spend a lot of time inside other people's houses anyway. You don't have that whole culture of, hey, what are you doing tonight? Hey, let's come over and watch some TV together. Of course, that's going to happen with like a sporting event or something. When those things happen, normally people are going to bars to see those things, not going over to a friend's house. Of course, someone goes over to a friend's house. That goes without saying. But the the entire idea that you're going to sit around in a big, comfy, carpeted living room on big, comfy sofas, crank up the air conditioning, put on a big screen TV and watch a football game or something – is anything but the norm. That is just not how people live. And whether it's weather-related or colonial architecture-related or cultural-related, all those things come together and make for exactly what we're talking about, culture shock. Americans just aren't prepared for the fact that Nicaraguans, even if they had the same income as Americans, they wouldn't live anything like Americans. So yes, in some cases, poverty, and there's other things as well, right? Litter is a major problem, and it's a very visible one. These things hit Americans very quickly because most Americans are now either grew up in a world without litter or we've been in one for so long because the U.S. went through its major anti-litter campaigns in the 1970s. They did so much to clean up the U.S. and credit to the U.S. for doing this amazing job on that. Nicaragua is just starting down that path, as is Costa Rica and most other countries in the region. So when you go around the region, you see a lot of trash, and it's getting better, but slowly. And there's a lot of challenges to that logistically. And all the things that people are going to jump down and say, why don't you just do this? Why don't you just do that? None of those things are realistic. You have to be here and understand the actual problems because most of the problems that exist are caused by people doing the things that people always recommend because those things don't actually work, but everyone kept telling them to do them. Or they're just the logical things you do and they just don't work and people haven't come up with a good solution yet. But those solutions can exist over time. They're going to get better and we see it improving. So I'm very hopeful about that. Litter is one of those areas that Nicaragua can leap forward with relatively little effort. They just need to get the campaigns and the education out there and it will change the country dramatically. And that will reduce some of that culture shock. But expecting some of those things, being open-minded and ready for like, okay, I'm going to a new country. Everything's going to be different. I need to just enjoy being in a new country, take it all in, and then make some attempt at interpreting, at reading what I'm seeing and ask questions and be inquisitive instead of judgmental. And it's very easy to become judgmental whenever you're in a new place. Oh, where I live, we don't have this problem. No, but we have this problem, right? It's different. Places are just different. But if Nicaraguans go to the United States, they have a lot of the same things. What do you mean you can't just go out and have a beer? It's too expensive. What do you mean there isn't simple public transportation that takes you everywhere? What do you mean it's dangerous to go into a neighborhood? Those aren't things that they're used to. What kind of problems does the U.S. have that they they have dangerous neighborhoods, right? Like that's that's a completely different aspect of life. Or they'll think, oh, okay, the U.S. has lots of dangerous neighborhoods and not realize that Americans mean you'll get killed rather than someone might just steal your camera. That perspective is so different. And so the longer you're, you're taking to understand a place, in many cases, I'm constantly shocked when I go back to the U.S. by how poor the United States is, by how little resources Americans have. Don't get me wrong. I 100% understand that a huge number of Nicaraguans are struggling to be able to feed themselves month to month, and the struggle is very real. Absolutely. Nicaragua has a massive employment struggle that is really impacting the country, and that is the core source of the majority of the culture shock that you will experience. If it wasn't for that, it would feel much more like going to Guatemala, which still is going to have quite a bit of culture shock because it is a completely different place. But the, the unemployment is an absolute game changer as far as how everything feels and everything you experience here in Nicaragua. But that said, once you have a middling income of close to $800 to $1,200 per month here in Nicaragua, and you go to the United States, it's often quite shocking to learn that Americans are struggling to get access to basic infrastructure and basic utilities and basic things that Nicaraguans take for granted as being incredibly affordable and widely accessible and just really high quality. So it really does go both ways. It's amazing in both cases that the other one prioritizes different things in society so incredibly differently that everyone experiences culture shock. And these things go far beyond just poverty and obvious things. Some things that are very, very subtle include that Nicaraguans don't tend to drive cars. There's not a big culture of driving cars. So when you come here, there's very few cars on the road comparatively. And likewise, when Nicaraguans see other countries, they're like, what are all these things on the road? Like, why are there cars everywhere? Why are 
parking lots defining your cities. And Americans, when they come here, are like, where are the parking lots? But you don't necessarily notice that that's what's wrong. You just notice that something's different. And it's like, why is it so different than my experience? Why is this nothing like I'm prepared for? And you find out, oh, it's because cities are built for walking and for taxis and for buses and because they're colonial. So heart and, uh, horse and buggy and stuff. But that's so different than the American experience. It's so dramatically different that you, you don't realize, you don't articulate. And that's not a bad thing. That's way better in Nicaragua, like so much better. Who wants to live in a city that's just a collection of parking lots? And yet that's what American cities are often zoned for. And it's ugly and terrible and just an awful way to live. And again, culture shock. It's just it's just very different. So overall, I think, yes, there's going to be tons of culture shock. And if you have this trepidation of I'm just not prepared for the world, then yes, ease yourself in with extra travel and research and all kinds of things. But if you're like, I'm really excited, I want to completely immerse myself in something totally different and get like this completely different worldview, jump into Nicaragua. It's going to be a great place because that culture shock can be one of the best things, right? That's just hit the system with the world isn't necessarily the same as the context you're used to come explore a wildly different context. It's not physically that far away and actually being so physically close makes how wildly different it is more obvious, more important. This isn't caused by being in a completely different part of the world. This isn't caused by being totally disconnected. These are places that historically grew up tightly tied together and diverged in recent-ish history to be so completely different, even though they're constantly dealing with each other. It's an amazing experience. Yes, for a lot of people, ease yourself in. But for a lot of you, just come right down. But prepare yourself. Understand that you're going to see every aspect of life be totally different from people cooking on. And, and it's little things, right? Americans, I've had many times comment when they see restaurants here, why aren't people wearing gloves? But World Health uh, Guidance says gloves are bad. For, for food preparation, they're much more likely to encourage uh, food contamination because people don't wash them as well. They can't feel them. They accidentally touch things. They, they tend to touch their faces more while wearing them and not take them off. They make it much more expensive to keep things clean. It's actually shown that using your bare hands and washing them thoroughly all the time is better for food prep than using gloves in nearly all cases. And it depends on the situation, but in general. But Americans are often like, that's so unsanitary. I would never eat there with them doing this thing that's actually more sanitary than most of the U.S. And so little things like that, having this ability to step back and say, OK, look, that's not what I'm used to. But does that make it bad? Does that make it wrong? Maybe I'm the one that's wrong in this particular case. Everyone knows that America's weird and unhealthy about that. Uh, but that's also a place where we know America's weird and unhealthy. Right. The way that America handles food is just universally weird compared to everyone else. People the world over talk about how we want to find ways to avoid the American food supply chain because it's so dangerous to world health. So we're all trying to avoid that. But if you're coming from an American context, seeing how it's done in Nicaragua is very different. Or in the United States, we don't really prioritize healthcare, but we do prioritize really bright hospitals. When you come to Nicaragua, the healthcare is fantastic, but the hospitals are often dark, not always, but often they're very dark. And Americans tend to react very strongly to that because it's the, it's the facade of healthcare that we've been taught to care about and not the reality of healthcare. Well, let's step back and take a moment and say, okay, this is dark. Does dark actually cause a problem? Is it dark where it, it doesn't need to be? Is like, is the surgery dark? No, the doctor can see, okay, okay, this is just my perception that dark is bad because we've been trained by TV and, and just it's cheap to provide bright hospitals. It's expensive to provide good health care. So that's where the focus is. Be prepared to be shocked, to have your mind blown, to reevaluate everything you think about the little tiny pieces of life, the things that you think are incredibly stable and never change and go without question. And suddenly you realize that everything is different. Yes, there are places, an awful lot of them, Nicaragua is in no way unique about this, that you can't flush toilet paper and that you don't have hot water in most cases. Nothing's plumbed for it. That we don't have three-prong electric in almost any cases. We don't ground our electric. That's probably not the best thing. There's all kinds of little things that you're used to. This is always how it is. And and suddenly that's not how it is. Yeah, you, you got to be ready to adjust a lot. But those who are willing and able to make that adjustment have a world of amazing opportunities, not just in Nicaragua, but around the world waiting for them, for them to come and see what it's like and explore new cultures and find new interesting places. And hopefully a lot of you come to Nicaragua and explore here as well. As always, get down those comments, ask your questions. 
leave your comments. Uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. Share on social media, tell friends and family about the show, and I will see all of you tomorrow. And I'll get those episodes up on the screen, click on one of those, and help support the channel.